family, it's Libby, and welcome back to a second episode of What's Good Richland 2. Thank you for the great response to the first episode. I was so excited to see how many people watched the first episode when it premiered and shared it with others. The whole point of this show is for us to feel closer together, even though we can't be together at our schools, and for us to celebrate the successes that even though we're not going to school Monday through Friday are still happening every single day. There's lots of what's good happening right here in Richland too. So thanks for joining the show and watching and helping to share what's going on that's great and wonderful in Richland too. Now let's get started with today's episode because I have a lot to share with you. Just like last time, we're gonna start with with some congratulations for some achievements. I'm gonna start with a senior at Blythewood High School who I actually met about uh, two years ago, back in 2017, when Abimanyu Salish and his fellow student, Samuel Cathcart, won the T.M. Floyd Top Innovator Award for South Carolina. And I've recognized um, Abimanyu multiple times at board meetings when the board, meet, the board, our board of trustees takes time to recognize students. And I've had, so I've had an opportunity to get to know Abimanyu and his dad. And his dad sent me an email along with Dr. Davis last week to let us know that Abimanyu had accepted an appointment at the United States Air Force Academy. I was very excited to hear that, but I was even more excited when I read that Abimanyu had received offers of a full four-year scholarships to eight major universities, one being the Air Force Academy. Also, he received nominations to West Point, and Annapolis. He received offers from Georgia Tech, Purdue University, University of Illinois, Texas A&M, Virginia Tech, and the University of Michigan. All are among the top 10 aerospace engineering programs in the country, which is what Abimanyu is going to major in at the Air Force Academy. In addition to those offers, he received full rides to study computer science engineering, University of South Carolina Honors College, and Clemson University's Calhoun Honors Program. So congratulations, Abimanyu. I've enjoyed watching you over the years, and I know that your success is just getting started. Congratulations goes out to also Bridge Creek Elementary School. Bridge Creek was recognized by the South Carolina ASCD, and they received the Whole Child Award. Bridge Creek received the award for taking a student-centered approach to addressing the whole school, the whole community, the whole child tenants of safe, healthy, supported, challenged, and engaged. Principal Kristen Eubanks said that it was a privilege for their work to be recognized with the award. Their motto is every child, every chance, every day, and that her talented team is committed to the whole child as they partner with families and community to support each of their children. So congratulations, Bridge Creek Elementary. We are extremely proud of you for receiving the whole child award. Now, if you watched the first episode, you may have caught, and, and some of you did, I'm glad to say, that we asked you to use the hashtag What's Good Richland 2 to let us know what you wanted us to talk about on the next episode. So I got several from the Scholars Academy at Ridgeview High School, so thank you very much. They were giving a shout out to students who competed in the National History Day group documentary. There was a group of four students who won first place for their group performance on Breaking Barriers, the spreading of the bubonic plague. Those are first place winners and they are going to uh, qualify to go to nationals. There's a second group of scholar students from Ridgeview who won third place for their documentary, Breaking Barriers, the Mongol Empire. Those are some heavy subjects there. So I can only imagine the hard work it took to make that into some fascinating, entertaining documentaries and y'all did a premier job. Congratulations. Also from Ridgeview, Jada and Ziana both placed in the top 10 of South Carolina for the Atlantic Institute's art and essay competition. And they entered on the theme of embracing differences and encouraging uniqueness. And if that isn't Richland too, I don't know what is, because we definitely embrace diversity, we promote inclusion, and we encourage uniqueness, and we encourage everyone to explore and develop their own unique gifts and talents. So what a great job for these two students to to share that message in essays that, that won in Top of the State. I had some other What's Good Richland 2 posts that I wanted to share. One I tagged from Longleaf Middle School, Robert Jackson. He shared a photo of the eighth grade team sending heartfelt message to all their students. And they did the individual shots of the teachers, each holding up 
a word in the message that was, we teach because of you. You make it worthwhile. We miss seeing your faces. We are team grade eight and love. Keep smiling, we love you. And there I've seen lots of those types of messages out. I'm gonna say social media as a way for our teachers to let their students know they miss them and they love them and they want them to continue to do their best. So wonderful. There was one more, yes, here it is. So I got tagged by Sabina Masso Taylor, principal at Jackson Creek Elementary. And she was tagged in a post by Kelly Turnipseed, who shared um, photographs of teachers coming by to see um, Kelly's son, who was a student at Jackson Creek Elementary. And my favorite picture from that post is the teacher on one side of the door and the student on the other, and they've got their hands up. It is um, wonderful. Sabina Masso Taylor said, this brought tears to my eyes, and I agreed with her. I said, yep, I'm probably gonna need some more Kleenexes when I talk about it on the show, but don't have any Kleenexes, but it did make me teary-eyed when I first watched, saw it. It is so touching. Now, I think that's all the news and congratulations I had to share. I wanna remind you to use that hashtag so that next time, when I go and do the search before for the next show and I look at hashtag what's good Richland too, I'll have an even longer list of things I can share with you. So again, it's hashtag what's good Richland too, all spelled out, or you can tag me on Twitter at, at @edroof. Now I get the pleasure of welcoming a special guest to our show, Dr. Marsha Lynn Franklin, who's one of our uh, premier assistant superintendents in the district and she's coming on to help me talk about teaching being a teacher and what we can do to celebrate teacher appreciation week and um, that's going to be going on when the show airs the second episode is going to air during teacher appreciation week so let's welcome dr franklin to the show dr franklin thank you for joining me it's my pleasure thanks for having me it's exciting and I, I have to give us an extra thanks because you are giving up your Saturday morning which if I have to be honest um that's why one of the reasons why I asked you because I figured I have to ask somebody to give up their Saturday morning I was yeah. like, you have very high criteria there. <laughs> well I, I, was, I didn't feel bad about asking you <laughs> because I've also asked you to do other fun and exciting things they're fun and exciting um for instance, our Facebook live test. Which oh yeah, those are awesome. They are awesome. And um, I'm trying to decide if we're, we should act like this is our Facebook live test or we should be a little more serious. Let's be, let's be a little more serious. A little more serious, yeah. okay. So I have Dr. Franklin with me, not Libya Marshall. Right, right. Right, okay. All right, well, I, I have one of the reasons I wanted to have you on the show uh, this week, it is, uh, this will air when it's Teacher Appreciation Week. And oh, so, yeah, this is exciting. This is one of our ways that this week, that, that week we're going to show teachers how much we appreciate them in Richland too. But um, you started off your career, you weren't always an assistant superintendent, right? I was not. I um, started out as an elementary teacher. I um, was blessed to be able to teach fourth grade in Beaufort for eight years um, prior to transitioning into administration. Did you, um, what did you teach in Beaufort again? Fourth grade. Fourth grade, that's right. Mm -hmm. So all subjects or? All subjects. The last four years, um, I taught math and writing. We did this like teaming approach um, and I was designated to teach math and then we all taught our home rules writing. Gotcha. gotcha. Did you transition to administration there while you were in Beaufort or did you come to Richland too? Nope, when I came to Richland too. I was um, hired as an assistant principal at Windsor Elementary and I worked with um, Jane Fancher for a year before Polo Road opened and then she and I went to Polo Road to open Polo Road the next year. Got it. All right. And then you were named um, principal at Polo Road Elementary after that, after assistant principal, is that right? Correct. So I was um, a, assistant principal there five years with um, Mrs. Fancher and then when she retired I became principal and stayed there five and a half years after that. And then you came to the district office where you got to come work with me. <laughs> the, best <Joy>. of, <laughs> the best benefit of all. <laughs> um, tell me what um, has impressed you most during the school closure. Um, some of the things that teachers have done that really stood out to you. Um, I guess if I would 
were to sum it all up would be the creative problem solving. Um, and I'm going to share some examples. I've um, seen on social media, teachers do things like virtual field trips, um, you know, in place of scheduled field trips that students were um, supposed to attend physically. And so they've um, solved that problem by doing virtual field trips. Um, just getting items to students. And so I've seen examples of um, teachers like sending items by a neighbor to a student or um, sending items in the mail to a student or even like delivering them to the homes themselves. Um, so just finding a way to, to make things work and to get items um, to students. And one um, creative problem solving that I saw um, earlier this week was one of our teachers um, who was doing read alouds from the back of a pickup truck. And so she um, traveled to um, some of the residences in their attendance zone and was um, reading aloud to students and some parents who were out there as well, uh, but from the back of the pickup trucks so that she could exercise physical distancing. Um, and then the, all the community parades where our um, teachers and staff and administrators have um, gotten together and like paraded their attendance zones just to say hello to their um, students. And as far as I know, most of those were teacher led. They weren't like the administration saying, hey, let's do this. It was um, from the, the hearts and minds of teachers that kind of um, sparked all of that happening. Uh, that that one idea about the, the reading out of the back of pickup trucks given me an idea. So, um, you know, after you and us have done a few Facebook live tests, we, we've talked about, you know, starting our own show. Well, you know, Stan has a, drives a truck and that could be one of the things you and I do. We drive around the district reading. Don't you think that would be fun? That would be awesome. You know, I'm a country girl, so <laughs> an opportunity to get on the back of the truck again is absolutely phenomenal. Well, you know, I live way out in the country. <laughs> so, I mean, that's another reason why we're, we're just so connected. Uh, those, the, I, those are wonderful um, examples that you shared. And you're exactly right. I think the creativeness of everybody during this time. Right. And our teachers are leading the way. And they, they are just being premier in, in that creativeness. And so many things they do just have touched my heart. Just the little little things that, that I think in the past we may have taken for granted, just the saying hello, just being able to see someone face to face, right. reading a book, so much of that now really um, during this time when things get kind of heavy and weigh you down, seeing those on social media has been, has been a real blessing for me and I think probably to a lot of people in the district. Um, so for, we're going to wrap up here quick. I don't want to keep you too long on your Saturday morning. Um, well, I'm up and made up now. I know. Okay, so you are. All right, so we're just going to go on. We're going to we're going to talk for hours. <laughs> the, the next second episode of what's good at Richland too is just going to be Libby and Marshall and having conversations. Saturday morning conversations. But that I don't think we'll get as many views as we did on the first episode. No. Uh, well, so we are um, going to be having Teacher Appreciation Week, and like I said, when this airs, we'll uh, kind of, I think, probably based on our timeline, be right in the smack dab middle of Teacher Appreciation Week. So um, some parents may be like me, which is not real good at coming up with ways to begin with when it's um, Teacher Appreciation Week, and I'm sending my kid to school, and I'm like, oh gosh, I'm, it's crazy busy, and I don't know what to do for Teacher Appreciation Week, and now we're not even sending our kids to school, but you know, still want to do something and, and let teachers know they feel appreciated. What do you have some ideas of what people can do during Teacher Appreciation Week to show their appreciation from a I do. I have um, two just right off the um, off the bat. Um, one would be just a very genuine um, expression of appreciation, um, be it an email or a um, a phone call to the teacher just you know, to very succinctly and genuinely express um, appreciation. I think that's um, is, is very heartfelt, it's very genuine, um, it doesn't cost anything. And so that would be my first suggestion in terms of expressing appreciation to a, um, a teacher is to, to do it in a very genuine way, just in very simplistic way of a, a note or an email or um, a phone call. And then um, the other I would um, suggest would be in a way that represents your child. And so for example, if your um, child is um, body smart and they, dance or um, do some acting or something of that nature is have your child express appreciation to the teacher using their particular talent. Um, if your child likes to draw a picture, um, of course, these are very elementary um, 
elementary oriented suggestions. And so just in, in whatever way that is um, representative of who your child is as, um, as a person, if he or she is a, a writer and they do poems or essays, then use that talent, use that um, strength as a way of expressing appreciation to the teacher, because that helps ensure that the teacher gets like lots of different gifts for um, teacher appreciation there. Those would be my two suggestions. I love this today. Those were just um, really good ideas. And I never thought about that, that second one. Um, and I, as you were saying, I was thinking about my two boys. Um, one's in elementary school, so, so and he is body smart. And I, I've never heard that term before, and I love that. He um, plays sports right. this season. He is a sports fanatic. In fact, he had to write an opinion uh, piece for one of his um, home activities. And um, he wrote why he should play a sport every season to try to convince me because I'm kind of like, yeah, you know, we don't need to be quite so busy. But um, so he could, you know, get out and do a cute video playing baseball, talking about the homework for his teacher. Oh, God, there you go. Oh, that's perfect. So we're going to your tape it and send it to her. All right, that's what we're going to do. You are great. And then Hayden, my oldest, is in the computers. So he could, you know, he's learning he's in a coding class right now. So he might be able to code a a genuine little message that he could and you know what he's um also or was also in um spanish immersion so he could send appreciation to his teacher in three ways a coded message you know just um right. in spanish and in english right and they both and hey mason sorry i get a mix up <laughs> mason is also um in spanish so i can in spanish immersion so he and hayden could record a message together talking to each other about their teachers very, very oh, thank yeah. you. Check, check, check. <laughs> it's so productive. <laughs> it really has been a great, um, a great time this morning with you, Dr. Franklin. Uh, it's not like I don't see you enough in these meetings right now, but <laughs> this was a lighter topic with some of the other things that we um, get to talk about and work through at work. But you've given us great ideas. I appreciate you sharing your time about your teaching days in Beaufort. Beaufort is one of my favorite cities in South Carolina. It is so beautiful. I love going there. Um, there was a, when I was a little kid, there was a chocolate, I think it was called the chocolate tree. Chocolate tree. Chocolate tree, yes. Oh gosh, I loved going there. I just love walking in those streets. It's beautiful. Um, we're so glad that, that you made the move from Beaufort to Richland too, though. I know that that's not an easy move to leave a beautiful city. I'm glad I came. It was a hard sell, but I'm glad I came. Yeah, yeah. And, um, Great examples of what has impressed you most. I think those are some of the exact same things that are impressing everybody to today is our teachers' innovative ways and creative ways to stay connected with their students. And tips to help our parents like me who are often scatterbrained and don't know what to do. You, you know, you've already planned my, my boys' ways to show appreciation. So before I go, I think I want to um, share my screen because I want to share something with our viewers. Uh, that's one of my favorite memories with you. This was this past year, this uh, October. Uh, <laughs> you figured it out yet? Yes. So I and Twister. <laughs> that is epic. In that though, I mean, that's a combination right there. And I decided if we, we, we move forward with our Facebook live show that we're going to start, we're going to call it Snow Twister. <laughs> and this will be our, lo our logo for the show. Nice. Uh, I'm telling you, it, it, we, we are going big time. <laughs> Dr. Franklin, big time with that. <laughs> All right. Well, I appreciate it. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday. And All right, we'll see. see you Monday. All right. Bye, bye. Bye. Thank you, Dr. Franklin, for taking time out of your Saturday to help me make the second episode of What's Good, Richland 2. I really enjoyed hearing about Dr. Franklin's time in Beaufort, how she made her way up to Richland too, and what she has really been impressed by um, and during this time of closure from our innovative and unique and creative teachers, and then how we can help recognize our teachers during Teacher Appreciation Week. Again, remember, you will be watching this during Teacher Appreciation Week, and Dr. Franklin shares some great ideas of how to say Thank you to your child's teacher or to your teachers if it's our, our students are watching. Now I want to take a moment to share a few highlights of some things teachers have done that are innovative, creative, and most of all, heartwarming. I received a photograph from Lisa Biston, and this actually came to her from a friend 
whose daughter is a kindergarten student in Miss Jackson's classroom from Pontiac Elementary. And the photograph is Miss um, Jackson and the student enjoying a lunch together very safely. They are separated by a six foot table in what I describe as a fairy tale princess setting outside, having a, a tea party or lunch kind of event. And Lisa describes the photograph this way. This photo captures the beautiful relationship between a teacher and a student. During these uncertain times, we need a picture like this to remind us what truly matters, a teacher and her student enjoying each other's company. I'm sure this lunch will stay in each of their memories for years to come. And you are exactly right, Lisa, um, in all of that. This is, these are the moments that will get us through these challenging times. And the, the importance of relationships really, um, I think now more than ever, is probably resonating with so many of us. And I think one of the um, things that we can see, a silver lining that we can get out of this time apart, is that for those of us who are not in a classroom and who don't get to witness day in and day out that special and unique bond and relationship between a student and teacher, we are getting to see that now because it's on display for us. We are seeing the Zoom classrooms. We are seeing the photographs of the special moments where finding ways to be safe through social distancing, still enjoying precious memories. So uh, thank you, Ms. Jackson, Ms. Dickerson, and Ms. Bishton for sharing that, that memory with me. Moving on now, I want us to watch a video from Tracy Mason, who was a seventh grade mathematics teacher at Longleaf Middle. And in this video, she is keeping a promise that she made to her students. Let's watch. When we first met, I shared a secret that I could spit rhymes. I'm the rapping teacher. I made you a deal that I would rap in class. I said I would do it once you all had passed. But now things are changing. We are learning online. So I thought, oh, well, why not? I should spit this rhyme. I'm just being real, this is different and new, but I want to give my best that much, I promise you. And let me tell you this, I mean it straight from my heart. I miss seeing you in class, for real that part. As you get ready for some math and fourth quarter, remember, I do, we do, you do, in that order. I apologize now if it gets confusing, but I promise you one thing, it will be amusing. I hope to see you soon on Google Meets. Come on, the virtual class. A C. Don't get overwhelmed, pace yourself, make a plan. Log in and ask me questions, I will give you a hand. Geometry is the topic that I'm going to teach you. We're in this together. I got your back, period. Boom. Hey. Hey. Now that is some talent. And I am so glad that Mr. Jackson, the principal at Longleaf Middle School, shared that with me. And I was able to share it with you here on What's Good Richland too. Those are the types of moments that people will enjoy and will make us all smile. So congratulations, Ms. Mason, on a fantastic job and for Ms. Mason's students for earning that wonderful display of her talent there. Now I wanna share some information that Kathy Harrington sent me. Kathy Harrington is a seventh grade social studies teacher at E.L. Wright Middle School. And during spring break, she led a virtual volunteer project for students from E.L. Wright Middle, Lifewood High, and Spring Valley High. She had 20 students join her during her spring break on a Zoom call, and they participated in icebreakers, service learning, projects, and reflection. And the projects included promoting a food drive for Harvest Hope Food Bank, making e-cards for senior citizens, making dog toys out of old t-shirts to donate to Pets Inc. Animal Shelter, and making e-cards for healthcare professionals at Prisma Health. And she shared some photographs from the Zoom meeting of the student making their dog toys out of old t-shirts. That is so creative. And so the projects were sponsored by the Youth Volunteer Corps of Columbia. And she shared that they actually have two more projects set up for the month of May of these virtual service learning projects. If the student's interested, they can go to YVCColumbiaSC.org, which YVC again stands for Youth Volunteer Corps, YVCColumbiaSouthCarolina.org to find out about those service projects in May or check the group out on Instagram. Now I want to take a moment before we wrap up the show to, uh, reflect back on April, which was the month of the military child. And all over the district, you could see the, our teachers, our parents, our fellow students celebrating 
the military children that make this district so great. And I received um, information from Regina Garmini Cherry, who is the student activities director at Richland North East High School. She shared some posts from Twitter with me, highlighting military students who have parents who are active duty. And they have shared three photographs with me. One is of Alex, whose mom is an active duty in the army. And he's an 11th grader at Richland Northeast. And he said he wants to continue the military legacy and join the Navy. And he is pictured um, on the Twitter post with General Beagle, one of our big fans from Fort Jackson. We're a big partner and a big supporter of Richland too. And he is always, General Beagle is always supportive of, of military students in Richland too, and all students in Richland too. We're, we're lucky to have him as one of our partners. And then we also got to meet through the post, uh, Kiera a ninth grader at Richland Northeast, and her dad is an active duty in the Army and had a great picture of her and her dad. And she has a wonderful attitude about being a military child who travels a lot and moves a lot. She said that she enjoys seeing different parts of the world whenever she moves, so they had a wonderful attitude about that. And then we met Annis, and her dad is serving in the Army. She's an 11th grader, and she joined the, RO, the Junior ROTC because she wanted to feel the same pride my dad feels when he wears his uniform. So I really appreciate Richland Northeast sharing that with us so that we could take a moment to uh, reflect back on April and the month of the military child and what the military brings to Richland too. We are very blessed to be the district that serves Fort Jackson. And we're very blessed that so many military families who come to Columbia choose to settle in, live in Richland too. You bring so much to our district. Um, from all your experiences, it really helps add to the fabric, the colorful fabric that is Richland too. So thank you. We enjoyed celebrating the month of the military child in April. And a big thanks to our Office of Diversity and Multicultural Inclusion and our military liaison for coordinating all those efforts during the month. It's almost time to wrap up the second episode of What's Good Richland Too. Before I go into our last two stories, I want to mention and remind you that the show is going to premiere during Teacher Appreciation Week, May 4th through the 8th. So make sure you go back and look at those ideas from Dr. Franklin on how you can show appreciation to our teachers during Teacher Appreciation Week. Also, remember, we want to keep the episodes coming, but that depends on you using that hashtag, What's Good Richland Too, and tagging me on Twitter at edroof. Now, let's say a thank you to two partners who have stepped up in a big way to help the Richland 2 Backpack Program. That program helps students from families in need. And typically when school is in session and we're, we're going to school on Fridays, students would receive a backpack with food items for the weekend. Well, of course that's not happening right now in terms of them getting those backpacks on Fridays, but our amazing social workers have come up with a way to get backpacks to many of those families. What we face though is the difficulty of getting supplies for the backpacks. But two partners stepped up, like I said, in a big way. The first being McDaniel Subaru. And we have a clip of employees, including Bill McDaniel, going to Sam's on a shopping spree to buy $1,500 worth of groceries for the backpack program. And they also donated $500 gift card, worth of gift cards. So let's take a look at that exciting shopping spree headed up by Bill McDaniels and McDaniel Subaru. The team is off and shopping. McDaniels is grinning from ear to ear. The grin may be symbolic of his life coming full circle. Uh, school uh, and the early grades, um, my parents did not even have 20 cents a day for us to have a hot lunch, uh, much less a carton of milk for three cents. Um, so I would have to tell the teacher that I was not hungry while the other kids went and had food. It was a tough environment, and this is when I really get to look at what's happening in our school uh, district here, Richmond too. Okay. It really just re resonates, and it, everything comes back to me like it was yesterday, that in our society that we have today, it's hard for me to imagine that our kids are not getting fed. I, I, I can't imagine that. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> She's warning you, you better turn around. <laughs> She's got the arm. Oh yeah. 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 
Yes, ma'am. <laughs> that was coming in at high gear. Okay, so how much we got in there? I think it's a corporate duty, and I think Subaru gets it. They understand it, and they encourage their dealers. Uh, they call partners, retail partners, not dealers, but retail partners. They want them to be a part of the community. That's how much Subaru is family oriented. That's how much Subaru wants to be a part of the community. And I can tell you, that's my philosophy as well. So being a Subaru retailer here in South Carolina, it's, it's perfect for me because I want to give back. Shopping part is over. How do you feel about it? That's awesome. Exuberating. I mean, I can't imagine how much joy uh, you could, how much more joy you could have in something like this right here. Being able to know we're going to feed some great kids and they're going to get another meal. That's awesome. And lastly, I'm going to let um, another one of our partners wrap up the show with a spe special message. Shandon Baptist Church held a curbside collection recently for Richland 1 and Richland 2 to collect items for families in need. We have a special connection with Shandon Baptist Church thanks to David Taylor, who is the mission pastor there, but he's also a proud Richland 2 parent and an assistant coach at Spring Valley in the cross country and distance running program. While our members of the communication team were at the curbside collection at Shandon Baptist Church, they took a moment to talk with Mr. Taylor and he had a wonderful message for all of the Richland 2 family. And I think it's just the perfect ending for today's show. So that's how we're gonna end it. I'm gonna turn it over to um, Mr. Taylor in this video um, to, to do our closing. Again, remind you one more time, hashtag what's good Richland 2 at ED Roof on Twitter, and we'll keep these episodes coming. And if you have younger viewers, you might want to stick around for after the show when I will read Click Clack Moo, Cows That Type. Now let's listen to a special message from David Taylor. In addition to being the missions pastor, I'm also just a Richland II parent. And I'm the assistant coach at Spring Valley High School in the cross country and distance track teams. And I just want you to know as a part of the Richland II family, I know this is a really hard time. And sometimes when we go through hard times, it's an opportunity for us to turn it into something beautiful. And if you're a mom or a dad or a family member at home trying to navigate all of this, all of the online learning, or if you're a teacher, I just wanna say, let's come together on this. Like let's take care of our own and do our best um, during this time because we can turn something really positive here that maybe endures even beyond this crisis. Thanks for sticking around for my second read aloud that's part of the second episode of What's Good Richland 2. Today I'm reading a Caldecott honor book, Click Clack Moo, Cows That Type by Doreen Cronin and pictures by Betsy Lewin. And this has been one of my favorite books for a long time. Farmer Brown has a problem. He has his cows like to type. All day long, he hears click, clack, moo, click, clack, moo, clickety, clack, moo. At first, he couldn't believe his ears. Cows that type? Impossible. Click, clack, moo, click, clack, moo, clickety, clack, moo. Then he couldn't believe his eyes. Dear Farmer Brown, the barn is very cold at night. We'd like some electric blankets. Sincerely, the cows. It was bad enough the cows had found the old typewriter in the barn. Now they wanted electric blankets? No way, said Farmer Brown. No electric blankets. So the cows went on strike. They left a note on the barn door. Sorry, we're closed. No milk today. No milk today, cried Farmer Brown. In the background, he heard the cows busy at work. Click, clack, moo. Click, clack, moo. Clickety, clack, moo. The next day, he got another note. Dear Farmer Brown, the hens are cold too. They'd like electric blankets. Sincerely, the cows. The cows were growing impatient with the farmer. They left a new note on the door. Closed. No milk, no eggs. No eggs, cried Farmer Brown. 
in the background, he heard them. Click, clack, moo. Click, clack, moo. Clickety, clack, moo. Cows that type, hens on strike. Who ever heard of such a thing? How can I run a farm with no milk and no eggs? Farmer Brown was furious. Farmer Brown got out his own typewriter. Dear cows and hens, there will be no electric blankets. You are cows and hens. I demand milk and eggs. Sincerely, Farmer Brown. Duck was a neutral party, so he brought the ultimatum to the cows. The cows held an emergency meeting. All the animals gathered around the barn to snoop, but none of them could understand Moo. All night long, Farmer Brown waited for an answer. Duck knocked on the door early the next morning. He handed Farmer Brown a note. Dear Farmer Brown, we will exchange our typewriter for electric blankets. Leave them outside the barn and we will send Duck over with the typewriter. Sincerely, the cows. Farmer Brown decided this was a good deal. He left the blankets next to the barn door and waited for Duck to come with the typewriter. The next morning, he got a note. Dear Farmer Brown, the pond is quite boring. We'd like a diving board. Sincerely, the ducks. Click, clack, quack. Click, clack, quack. Clickety, clack, quack. The end. Thanks again for joining me for our read aloud, and we'll see you next time on the next episode of What's Good Richland 2. Take care.